But why not? There we go. It's going. I jumped on YouTube and saw a couple of videos talking about the FTC, the government getting into YouTube and changing the rules of engagement. This is nothing new. The United States government operates on a fiscal year, a, a money calendar, to oversimplify it. And every fiscal year, they change the rules of engagement for the judicial, legislative, all of the above systems. All the rules that they tell you, you, you can't do this, you can't do that. Now let's give some extra historic context. Prohibition during the, what is it, 30s through the 40s? That's when the United States government was in default of the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence. Yeah, it, it's, it's a document that nobody uses in court because they take it for granted. When I say in default of, I mean in direct and blatant and willful violation of these established guidelines and principles that were set forth by the Founding Fathers of the United States of America. The principal item in the document known as the Declaration of Independence that they were in violation of or in default of during that prohibition period was the unalienable right to the pursuit of happiness. Further historic context for the three aforementioned unalienable rights of which they are not all of the unalienable rights, just to be absolutely clear on that subject matter, are worded by the Founding Fathers in such a way that to violate any one violates all three by default. You violate someone's unalienable right to the pursuit of happiness, which is a civil liberty. Liberty being one of the three mentioned unalienable rights. Ergo, to violate one also violates the other. And life. It is your choice to live your life however you see fit. So these people were making the life choice to exercise their civil liberty by pursuing happiness through the imbibement of alcoholic beverages. Ergo, the United States was in default of violating everyone's unalienable rights, all of them, simply by enacting prohibition back in the 30s through the 40s. How does that relate to now? Well, it's legalese, if you will. How is the FTC, YouTube, and the United States government violating your rights, your unalienable rights, which are civil liberties, which are protected by the Constitution and established by the Declaration of Independence? How are they violating them on YouTube? Well, it's quite simple. They're inhibiting the freedom of speech. This is a life choice, or a pursuit of happiness. If you want to say fuck, shit, ass, nigger, Islamic, Hitler, Nazi, if you want to say these words, they are just words. They have no real implication unless you have a psychological or emotional implication from yourself. This is what the judiciary system calls motive. Now let me make my motives in this video 100 million percent clear. Absolutely concrete. This is to inform you that the United States, the FTC, and YouTube are in default of the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence. They're violating your civil liberties your life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness to say what you so see fit to say in your life. They are enacting censorship.
there you go. Now I can make a number of exemplary points on the subject matter of your unalienable rights, your pursuit of happiness, your liberty, your life. For example, here in this ass-backwards state of Alabama that I live in, surrounded by mongoloidal retards, and yeah, a lot of the horror stories you may uh, stereotype, there, a lot of them are true, but I stay far away from them. That side note aside, they have enacted a law that requires you to fasten your seatbelt. This is a direct violation of your unalienable right of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. More so in the first and third, however, it is no less important that it is violating all of your rights. If you so see fit to endanger your life by not wearing a seatbelt and taking that risk, that is your life choice. That is your liberty to exercise your life choice and pursue your happiness if you so see fit to not wear a seatbelt. Thus, that law in this state is in default of the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence is as established by the Founding Fathers. Now, let's talk about drugs. The phony baloney, happy-go-lucky, feel-good war on drugs is extortionary at its best. It is, uh, at its worst, treason by default of being a violation of your life choice to imbibe or inject or smoke whatever you so see fit to pursue your happiness. Thus, all of the drugs are your pursuit of happiness. They are your life choice if you so see fit. This is not something that I'm saying is concrete, you must do. This is something I'm saying is your freedom to choose if you so see fit. And the United States laws against them are by default treason in violation of the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution that supports the Declaration of Independence as established by the Founding Fathers. I could keep going, but point in case here, to simplify everything, the United States is a tyranny in default of everything that the Founding Fathers established in the Declaration of Independence. I will tell you quite simply, it is the responsibility of the citizen to rise up against such tyrannies when they arise, when they exist, to absolve them and to recreate a new form of governments, governance, words, that supports people's freedoms, that supports people's free will, that is not in default of itself as the United States government currently is in this current and corrupt and tyrannical system. Need I say more? Also, a lot of you um, have let this happen. You've let the United States government control you with fear, which is the literal definition and legal definition of terrorism. You've allowed the government to become a terrorist organization in default of its founding principles. You've surrendered your freedoms, you've surrendered your unalienable rights by voting for these laws and allowing these infringements against your unalienable rights simply because the United States government pays the media and enforces the media to control you through fear. I could put several points in case on this subject matter. So, 
several examples have already occurred. They are all out there. The media says something with a provocative and fear inciting title, such as, Is it safe for your children? Yes, they attack your fear against things outside attacking your children. They attack your fear of uh, pro not being protected. To sway your opinion, to sway your vote, so that you will willingly give up your freedoms. This has been going on for decades, to say the minimum runtime for these tyrannies for the terrorism that the United States government has been committing to. This is, uh, it's all planned. They get in a room together and they say, how can we take down this thing that we don't like? How can we, um, control the people? Well, it's simple. You control people through fear. What do we make them afraid of so that they'll surrender these rights so that we can control them in this way? That is the dialogue that takes place in closed doors, the behind the curtains, behind the scenes, whatever you want to call it. The uh, unaired clips from meetings of the groups in charge, from the people who control the government itself. And these people, they don't even follow their rules. This is most prominent in, uh, let's see, uh, 1990s movies. One of which starred Paul Hogan. It may seem anecdotal, but nothing unreal exists, so the fact that, uh, someone is saying something about it means it exists in some capacity. Well, what happened in one of those movies I'm talking about is uh, the group of rich or aristocratic people, people in charge, people in control of the media, involving several members of the media in one of these movies. They were all doing, uh, what was it? cocaine, having a party, yet they don't want you to exercise your inalienable right to the pursuit of happiness or the life choice, your civil liberty to use whatever compounds you so see fit to put into your body. That is your choice to make if you so see fit. It is not their right to enforce any rule against that. Uh, further supporting evidence for that for everyone who claims to be a Christian. Didn't Jesus himself say, Not that which goes into the mouth of man defileth him, but that which cometh out of the mouth of man defileth him. For what cometh out of the mouth of man cometh from the heart. You see, your leaders, your government is... A double standard tyranny. I could not think of any more colorful euphemisms or words to describe other than a tyranny. Your government is a tyranny in default of its founding principles that were set forth and established by the Founding Fathers. Now, with all of that in mind, with the examples from several things, not just one, with examples from several sources, and for gamers, the... let's see... the most recent thing for gamers YouTube being able to say that your video is not suitable to be displayed on YouTube, which is under the cover of monetization. 
I use this monetization with quotation fingers because it is a ploy. It is a distraction. It is part of the Confusopoly that is meant to make you think one thing when in fact they have changed their legal definition of it to mean another thing. When YouTube says monetizable, they mean it's suitable for us to display on our platform and let everyone see at their leisure and exercise their unalienable right to the pursuit of happiness to choose whether or not they wish to view it or not. YouTube has taken this freedom and said, censorship. We're not allowing your video to be seen by anyone. In fact, if you don't do what we say that you should do, we will delete your channel. This is censorship. This is violation of your, your right to the freedom of speech and self-expression. Quite bluntly and simply, that's exactly what it is. But they're tying it up in legalese to confuse you and muddy the issue. And it sounds absurdly retarded when I say it, but it is the truth. I am not speaking facts, because facts in a court of law are simply events that may or may not have occurred, depending on the opinion of the jury, the judge, and the attorneys. It depends upon the opinion of those in charge whether or not you are free or not. That is how your corrupt and tyrannical system currently has been functioning for decades, to say the least of its runtime. Why am I saying this? To be quite clear, it is far past time to absolve the United States government to do away with the corrupt and tyrannical system and to re-establish a new system that is equitable for all people. And the way the Declaration of Independence was worded needs to be updated as well. It needs to say all people, not all men. This is sexist. This is provocative, to say the least, because there are more form of life than just human males. It needs to say all people to encompass all races and genders, all species. Yes, cats, dogs, birds, etc. They all have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. My cat chooses to exercise his by being an indoor-outdoor cat. That's his choice. And I must respect it, as I do. Humanity, it is 200 years minimum runtime, past time to update your outdated view on life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Because all things are alive, even this remote. It has its own spiritual energy within it which can be quantified as the electromagnetic field that is generated by every last individual atom. Yes, every atom is an individual spark of life even unto itself. You can observe this with a method of photography called Krillian photography, an ambient electromagnetic field that surrounds living objects, trees, plants, people. Yes, you are an object. Not the legalese definition of object, which means something to be exploited and utilized, an asset to be discarded when its runtime has expired, which is subjugated to the opinion of those in charge. But I'm quite simply saying, life is everywhere. It is time to update your outdated view on life. And yeah, I could go into a theoretical physics debate and 
a spiritual debate, but I'm simply quantifying the known variables for future reference. And yes, everyone needs to think in five dimensions as opposed to one. And I can prove that mathematically very few people think in barely one dimension. A line is not two-dimensional, it is one-dimensional. Especially when your perception is that line. Linear thinking is one-dimensional. What I'm speaking of, my entire video, is two-dimensional. I'm thinking of the possibilities, the branches off of this line of thought, and the implications down the line of the lack of thought outside of a one-dimensional line. <clears throat> now, mathematically, a line is two-dimensional, but in all reality, a line is one-dimensional, especially in this context of a thought process. It is a narrow, shallow, short-sighted, one-dimensional view. You can't see past what's in front of you because the line is a constant barrier. You're moving through it without even knowing. To quote a video game, the future is an uncertain and shifting thing and he cuts like a blade through it. This came from the video game Knights of the Old Republic to the Sith Lords. We are all blades cutting through the future. Some dull and slow in cutting through the time into the future. Some sharper. It is time to update your spark of life within yourself and generate light so that you can see past yourself into the future so that you can see the possibilities they're not just in front of you they're to the left the right the top and the bottom because to quantify the fourth dimension as the word time let me explain it this way it is an ocean in which you swim it has depth it has height it has width and it has breadth I may have confused width and breadth, but it has six directions of travel, which is why theories of multiverse and alternate timelines, parallel timelines, skewed timelines, intersecting timelines, which is why these theories exist, because time, the fourth dimension, if you want to call it that, I quantify it as inertia and momentum, because time is a concept created by a temporal, a temporary existence trying to justify its perception of movement and momentum and inertia. So there you have a little bit of my understanding of what time really is. It is a three-dimensional space in which you float. It is the sea in which you sail your ship or submerge your submarine or swim through. However you want to progress through it is your choice. That is your choice of life. That is your pursuit of happiness. However you choose to proceed through the fourth dimension is your choice. Not mine to enforce on you. I'm simply stating the truth. going from legal to philosophical, it is all relative and relevant. You cannot take information from one source because it becomes rigid and stale. You must take information from multiple sources and that makes you a more holistic, a better person. This was the lesson that uh, the voice actor Mako, his character Iroh, in Avatar The Last Airbender told to Zuko. I take wisdom, knowledge, and bits of experience, tiny bits of experience, tiny little spark, 
from multiple sources. Video games, movies, TV shows, real life. My theoretical thinking of the possibilities of the future, the present, and the past. I take all of these informations and craft wisdom and knowledge from them. So here, you, you now have this wisdom and this knowledge. The legalese all the way to the philosophical and spiritual. It's a sliding gradient. It's a waveform. It, it has its peaks and its troughs. It has frequency and it has movement. It's all a part of life. You cannot take legalese cut and dry without the emotional, psychological, spiritual, theoretical... What are the others? I forgot. You cannot take it so cut and dry. You have to have everything holistically. Life is uh, an equation upon equation upon equations. Uh, equations upon equations upon equations. It's a myriad of things interacting with one another. You cannot take one wheel, gear, or cog out of the system of life and say this is an absolute. That is short-sighted, narrow-minded, and a shallow perspective on all of existence. It limits your potential as an individual, as a living being. It limits your life to view things so cut and dry, so narrow-mindedly focused on a linear progression without considering the branches and the loops therein. So with this information, do with as you see fit. You are the one who makes the choices for yourself. Or as Kojima said in his video game Death Stranding, be yourself, be free. Huh. Makes sense to me. Does it make sense to you? That's it. That's the end of this um, presentation of knowledge, wisdom, and theoretical information. And plain information presented along with the rest of it. My advice is to be patient and to think on these things before you choose to act. And then after you've thought, think about the possibilities of your actions and the effects of your actions upon the life of every individual being around you. Think about the ripples and echoes that your actions, your thoughts, and simply listening to the information I've presented in this video. Think about all of these things that's my advice, to be patient and think. Or as Doctor Who says it. Do you know what thinking is? It's just a fancy word for changing your mind. So, I pose to you this question. For you to answer for yourself, not for me. After you've thought about these things, did I change your mind? Until next time, toodles. <clears throat>